Another roundtable episode. Uh, no Mr. Gregory today, so the G Unit ran the show. Great show, Danny. Yeah, how not to be small. You got training stories, you got business stories, and how to yeah. be confident. Uh, we should title this How to Be a Fucking Dog. Yeah, facts. Yes, dude. Yes. Yeah. I think it's always nice to have Anthony on. This is like the, I feel like the third or fourth time we've had him on, but it's always a banger episode. Yeah. Amazing episode. Let's go to the show. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Roundtable. Uh, no Mr. Gregory here today. I'm uh, Cole Suzak, the graphic gangster. I will be running the show. Along with me is uh, Small Arms Danny. Uh, we have special guest, Mr. Tyler Treadway, and we have the King of Web 3, Trayvon Deere. But today, we have a special juicy guest all the way from New Hampshire, we have contributor of the Arms Army 30 Days of 30 Inch Arms Workout. Shout out. Let's go. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, trigger warning <laughs> conjugate, uh, stay hated owner, Mr. Anthony Oliveira. How we doing, boys? What's up, what's up? I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. For I was sure. like, when uh, <laughs> Corey's like, I'm gone Monday to Monday, and I'm like, fuck, dude, like, I'm going to miss him. And I'm like, hey, Danny, like, hey, Cole, <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys still want a podcast? Like, we're going to bullshit anyway. Trying to like, you out. might as yeah. well record it. <laughs> well, we know, like, every time you're on here, it's just like a juicy-ass conversation. You stop calling me juicy. You just called me lean before, which is a nice way of calling me small. I'm still mad about well, that. Well, dude, I will say, like. I'm going to hold on to that. <laughs> other ways to say small. All, all, all I'm saying is I just see the trap stick now of the shirt, and, like, I just, like, I want, it's like an automatic. I want them to be offensive. Mm. I, told, I told the guys in my group, I'm like, all right, here's the deal. It's a good place to start. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, here's the fucking deal. People kind of know who I am, right? But like the guys in my group, they're not as well known. And they're just kind of getting, I was like, I want to show up to the WPO with y'all there. And I want everyone to be like, what the fuck is that? Let's get, I want everyone here to be so fucking jacked that they're like, I'm the shortest guy in my group besides the 18 year old. I look like, and I love that. Uh -huh. They're all just like monsters. They're all so big. So I'm like, I, I need to get super jacked. So you guys have to get more jacked mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, and it'll be like, it'll be sick. Cause I want to be like aesthetically, like I want to walk into meets with my group and people like yeah. shit their fucking pants. Yeah. Which we're getting closer. I got a new kid with us. It's like uh he's like two, he's like six, two, two ninety. He's like a SWAT guy. He's mm -hmm. fucking huge. Um, and he just got into multiply and I just love having big dudes like that around. Like I want to be the, I want to be the smallest guy. You're like the jacked version of that, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle meme with like Master Splinter in the middle. Dude, bring <laughs> it. <laughs> Ninja Turtle, dude, bring it. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll take so that all day. Are, so are you like telling your guys to wear like a, you know, like size down on their t-shirts? No, the no, we go the other, no, we go the other way. Oh, you size So down. I want, the, the thing is like, Bro. I want people to be able to see your traps when you have a hoodie on. Nice. That's the goal. That's a good goal. Because it's yeah. like, you could take a dude who wears a small t-shirt and put him in an extra small and he looks jacked. I want a dude who looks jacked, even though he's wearing two sizes too big. Mm. Wow, you got to be pretty diesel. To I might need to take, I might need to take that in because whenever we whenever we do the meets in February, I'm always bloated up and like with all the fucking <clears throat> sodium and shit, my arms feel like balloons. And the the 4M crew T-shirts we have, yeah. they're all like for some reason they're small. Super so small. I literally yeah, look arms. fucking massive. Bro, switch yeah. to the the. I went to Gildan. I put everything on Gildan now. I saw a fucking meme that was like, you know, the be a man memes, like uh -huh. the, like whatever that that comedian. He says like, uh, I saw one that's just like uh, Gildan shirts, like too boxy for you. Like get so big they're too small. Be a man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I actually like, really love Gildan t shirts. Dude, they're gangster and they're kind of like. <clears throat> uh, you probably know about it's like nostalgia sells, right? And yeah. like the the Gildan, like the baggier. Dude, fit. it feels like the two thousands like football t shirt yeah. basically. Yeah. Gildan's yeah. been around for yeah. how fucking long? Yeah. yeah. And all the, yeah. everybody has like that. Um the reason we started doing it, well, the real reason was I was like, damn, these are pretty cheap to fucking get blanks of. Uh, besides <laughs> like mm -hmm. Bella Canvas or whatever. So but then also it's like everybody's got that T shirt that's like their older brother's fucking T shirt, their dad's T shirt, and you look at it and it's like it's from fucking 15 years ago 20 years ago and it's you know the shit might be faded a little bit but the t-shirt's still intact it's always like 100 percent cotton fucking heavy cotton gilded yeah. mm -hmm. it doesn't and they stretch barely shrink too that, yeah and it doesn't stretch out either like i can like with the bella canvas like squatting and shit or benching like put your traps down you push you get loser neck you know what i mean like yeah. and so uh the gildans always like go back to normal and the bella canvas don't we're gonna have to put a sub note on the arms army yeah we'd say always size down but just get so big that you fit into your shirt. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Grow, grow, yeah. like give yourself, give yourself like a, a goal, you know, like you're like, yeah. like, dude, we have this one kid that, that's in the group. That's very, uh, 
uh, how can I say this? He's uh, he's worried about it. He wants to look good. Like he's mm. he's worried about it, right? And so he always he'll buy two t-shirts every drop that I do. He'll dr- he'll buy an XL and a large, and he'll take the large and he'll cut the sleeves off. And it's <laughs> okay, like his, yes. his deadlift shirt or whatever. And I'm nice. Like, Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, dude, it used to be a medium and a large, and we're like, dude. You're 220 pounds. You can't be wearing a medium. <laughs> 220 pounds? That's fucking crazy. Holy yeah. That's insane. I'm like, How tall is he? Two t- yeah, he's probably like 5'11". He's pretty lean. He's got yeah. like a small waist. Be- and I'm like, dude, you look jacked, but you also look like you're like trying to look jacked. Yeah. Like, it's like, just <laughs> yeah. wear a bigger shirt. Yeah. So we, we got him. Uh, he, he asked me to hold him a shirt off a drop, and I intentionally held an XL instead of a large, and I gave it to him. And he's like, my wife actually... She likes. She said she likes this look better. I'm like, yeah, dude. Everyone on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Like, and so it began, like, yeah. yeah. So, so now we're transitioning. All right. Like, all right. So let's talk about your crew. Like, how many guys are you training with, and like, what's your training schedule look like? <clears throat> so we have. So when we first got out there, did I come back here since? Did I do one of these? Yeah, I went and then I came back, right? Because we did yeah. the like the goodbye one, and then yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we had like, it started with just me and Val and this kid Josh. We call him Rambo. Um, and he's like an OG, like he, I, he was the first kid that I trained when I started working in gyms. Like he was the first, he was like mm-hmm. fucking 13 or some shit. I've known him for years. And, um, <clears throat> and so it was just us three. And then we brought, we brought in one kid and it didn't work out. He's, you know, whatever. It's not even worth getting into. And then it, we've kind of slowly built it. So now it's like, it's, uh, me, Val, Josh, which is Rambo, his brother, Sean, who's like, uh, he played uh, lacrosse in college and did some like, not semi-pro, but like high-end, like men's league shit. He's an gotcha. athlete. He's built like a centaur. He's all ass and legs. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no shoulders, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we're working on that. But he's like really, really good. Uh, really, really uh, athletic. And then um, who else? We, and then Connor, who's another WPO guy, Connor Boyle. He... He's like a two, he's like two thirty, and he's got like a like an eight fifty squat, like a four seventy bench, and pulls pulls like seven fifty. Like he's got a good deadlift. So we're working on the other ones, and then um, uh, who else? We have an eighteen year old. Uh, we call him Spandy. His name's Andrew. We call him Spandy because he's in single ply. So single okay. ply Andrew, and then it kind of. <laughs> Turned to Spandy. <laughs> At first, I don't think he liked it. Yeah. But we, <laughs> so, so he's he's Spandy. And that's like how I introduce him to people now. So he's 18 years old. He's a 148, and he oh, his wow. best oh, numbers are damn. Yeah, he's a little guy. But like, I mean, when he showed up, he was like a 123. Like he had never powerlifted before. Gotcha. And so we got him into single ply stuff. He's just not quite like his bones aren't big enough to be in multi ply. I can't mm-hmm. imagine putting him in like a canvas. Like it's too much, right? So. Uh, his best number is at 148 at 18 years old, a 402 squat, 220 bench, and like a 360 deadlift. Damn. And single ply is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like a, he, he didn't put all of them together. He kind of fucked his deadlift, kind of got fucked up at nationals, but he's got like a mid 900 uh, total. If he can break a thousand in the next year, it'll put him top 10 all time for teen. Fuck yeah. um, which is cool. The, those small single ply <clears throat> records, once you get out of teen, are insane because it's all those russians oh so like the 148 single ply squat world record is like fucking like 770 or something it's like fucking it's like something (laughs) stupid it's so big and uh it's like some 40 year old russian that's been on here for 25 years or whatever you know and so uh yeah but he's really good and then um oh yeah and then Corey is like the new guy who we kind of brought in and um we train Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the evening, and then Sundays in the like late morning. Basically, like the standard conjugate splits. Yeah. We deadlift on Monday, bench on Wednesday, squat Friday, and then our secondary bench is on Sunday. Fuck yeah! It's good. We have like a good. Uh, so I just trained with Night Crew out here last night um, at Doghouse, and it's really interesting <clears throat> to see the difference, like in what, like, the vibe for that shit versus the vibe for ours and what I've taken from the mm-hmm. night crew here and brought it there and what I've left here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so that was really cool and it was like kind of refreshing and what, Dave's helped a lot. What, what's like the one thing that sticks out? Like what, what did you notice? You're like, ah, well, 
<clears throat> out here, the guys are a little more self-sufficient with like their weight selections. Okay. Because they have more skin in the game. They have more time. I'd say like the average ability level is higher in the night crew in Ohio. Um, and definitely like the training age is, is definitely like older. Yeah. Um, so my guys, I just had to like have like a rage moment on them a few weeks ago. Cause I'm like, I can't call every one of your fucking weights. You have to figure out, you know, cause yeah. out here, like I train with these dudes for so long and they're so with it. Um, mm -hmm. like we could train, like, you know, we've never benched together. Right. But I know that like. If we started benching together, like we go plate, and then I look at it, I go quarter, and I'm looking, and I could just guess, like, oh, you want dime five or you want a two plate, like, you know, yeah. just because I know, right? And a lot of these guys haven't either haven't trained in a group or haven't been doing it for long enough. So I had to like, I had this moment where, like, we had two or three people free squatting, and then like four of us on another mono box squatting, and then Val was squatting in another one, and. I took the biggest weight all night and wrapped every fucking knee and called every weight. And I just like, I lost it. I was like, guys, like, yeah. and they don't mean anything. They want to do good. They want, the reason mm -hmm. they're asking is because they want to do the right yeah. thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I'm sure it's like if somebody, if a new guy comes in with the 4 a.m. stuff, it's like, they're yeah. kind of like, what do I do with what, what, like, what's the work up? Like, are we using, what is, what does two double choke minis be, mean? Like, you know, <laughs> they don't know. And so, they're really cool. They were wicked receptive about it. I'm like, bro, I was like, I coach people all day. Like, you got to make my life easier in here. So that's like, I think that's the biggest difference is the self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone in the crew in Ohio can set straps, set a suit, set a shirt, hand out, wrap knees, call depth. Yep. Everybody can do it. So we're working towards that. And the guys are awesome about it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. interesting you bring that up because, like, it's stuff that, like, we've picked up, like, just from, like, so Cole and I have been around. It's it's me, you, and Todd who have been around Corey the longest. And but Zach. like Zach's been. And, and Zach. But all four of us plus G could call every single person in yeah. here. And, and, and Trey, too. Like, we could all tell what everybody's going to take for the next week. Yeah. Like, we know, like, all right, double blacks, one squat, this, this. You know, whatever variation we're going to do. I, I know what Cole's gonna take next. I know what squat Trey's gonna take next. Like we all kind of have a feel for everybody else, but we also take that for granted because we've been training together for so long yeah. that I, it's it's yeah. interesting to hear that because like you said, if like somebody new came in, we wouldn't know how to act. We haven't had anybody new for so long. Yeah, and it's like we forget about things like that. That it's like, you know, it's easy to get like kind of like on each other's shit when you're training together every day. Like sometimes you just fucking hate somebody, yeah. even though it's like, all right, it's my brother, but I it's fucking just hate in the today. moment. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the moment you get pissed off at motherfuckers, but it's also like, we know so much about it. We're so fucking close that it's like you, we take yeah. that for granted for sure. Yeah. Well, and I mean, learning those things also like not only sorry to cut you off, but like the, uh, you say like you know you've trained together for so long you know the jumps but like just based on the fact you've been in gym for so long you've been in a crew for so long you could get dropped into another crew yeah. and you know what a like hard bench press looks like and yeah. what they're going to go to next yeah. at least like within the realm right and these dudes just didn't really know that well yet. i mean even thinking like if you're if you're the new one going into a situation like this where you're dependent on always asking someone else there comes a time where like you basically have to try to figure shit out on your own yeah yeah so you have to pick up that like you know treadway if he needs help like I don't, i'm not going to ask him i'm just going to go do it and try to figure it out and hopefully i fucking do it right you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah. like i i'm not going to ask treadway oh treadway how do you want your bench lift over time i'm just going to go do it or who's yeah. next in the rotation i'm just going to figure it out the rotation fuck thing is fucking that's part of it too bro <laughs> hey, that, that that part never gets fucking better my, though, my yeah. guy like i just like that shit that never gets better i had a couple moments where like you know like our our uh our bathroom at the gym is kind of like even in the old place it's kind of like out the door around the corner type of thing it's not like in the gym like this mm -hmm. one is so <clears throat> there were times where it was like all right i gotta take a piss before i put my briefs on i go take a piss and i come back and everybody's standing there like waiting to take their next set because they wanted me to watch every set and i'm like my guys like what like, what are we doing they're saying, it. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying <laughs> it you know what i'm saying and like I, I don't mean to like shit on my guys they just didn't know any better right so now they're like really take i said i told them the other day i was like listen if you don't know what your working weight is for our speed squats, right? Like, ask me when I'm warming up. Don't ask me again. I don't want to hear it again. And also, if you don't know what jump to take, before you ask me, ask one of your training partners. Ask somebody else here. And then that way you guys get to know. 
Like, then you know, okay, so I know that Josh is going to go bar, one plate, two plate, or one plate, jump to two plates, quarter, then put his briefs on and jump to three plates, quarter. And I know that because I've seen him do it, right? And so if somebody's confused on what to do, he knows what I expect for jumps, and they can ask him. So Josh and Val have kind of become like the – the separators from the kind of they, they kind of filter out like the questions right because mm-hmm. we've got guys that start going to them first or like if i'm like like dude if i'm hanging in my briefs and i'm trying to fucking put my briefs like i don't want to answer your fucking questions i want to be left alone for a minute i'm trying to lift weights so uh th- they've <coughs> noticed like when when is a good time when is not a good time mm-hmm. and <sighs> not to be i bet you this happens to Corey a lot maybe not so much with you guys now because you've been with them for so long but it's like Everybody kind of wants their moment with me, right? Yeah. And I don't mean to sound like like narcissistic or egotistical, yeah. but they all want like that. They want them. They want their personal relationship with me to be something different than the next guy, and they want to have their little conversation with me, and that's cool. And I get it. I was with that with Dave for a long time, like these little side combos that I want. Like, so our relationship is different. Where, um, and it just like takes a minute to get past that where it's like, dude, I'm here. I'm your friend. We're good. Like fucking yeah. ask somebody else what you, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. so, and they've been awesome about it. We've just had a few like come to Jesus talks where I'm like, all right guys, <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm fucking right now. I'm like 16 weeks out from the WPO. So I'm not like fully on edge, but like I'm getting there. So th- <laughs> there's going to come a time in the next like 10 weeks where it's like, I'm unapproachable when we're in the gym and I just need to clear it out before that. And they've been fucking good. We had like, I've had like two times where I've had to talk to the guys and they've, they've figured it out. It gets better every week. Yeah. So that's sick. Yeah. There's a uh, coming to Jesus talks. So I've witnessed Corey have a few of those. I never, yeah. I never had one myself, but just watching it. But also what's interesting is Corey would never like he, like he would just basically not even like, if you came up to him immediately and asked him a question, he would like basically give you a small ass answer. You would have to like prove it. You'd basically have to go do something fucking crazy to where he would have to talk to you. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, you have. To, that's that West Side stuff. That's yep. that. Like you kind of earn your stripes, right? So like off rip, when someone's new, I give him a lot of attention. Like this Corey guy. Like I give him a lot of attention because I see the potential and I want to know how they react when I fucking coach them. And then the real tell is when I say. Val, what did you see? And then I see how they react to having a female tell them that they suck at lifting weights. And that's the tell. Because mm. if you roll your eyes at her, you're fucking out. Because she's a better coach than I am. She's a better <laughs> lifter than I am. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So some guys have a hard time with that, and you can figure it out like that. So I, I'll take a newer guy to the group. I'll give him a ton of attention. I'll be up his ass, like micromanaging <clears throat> him and being like, dude, you're going to suck at this for a long time. So I'm going to try and break every bad habit you have right now. And then over time, I like, then you back off. Then they got to do something cool to, to tell me that they're like, once we get them to a base level, yeah. then it's, they have to do the cool thing or mm-hmm. they don't fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like I tell my guys, like you pay a gym membership here until you do something cool. Once you do something cool, I'll fuck, you don't have to pay a gym membership, but like, it, and cool to me is going to be something pretty sick. Cause I've seen a lot <laughs> of shit. <laughs> like, so you have to yeah. do something wild. And it's the same thing with like getting a night crew shirt. Like, the only people in our group right now that have night crew shirts are me, Val, and Josh. And that's how it's going to stay until somebody does something that I think is, and it doesn't have to be something in the gym. Like it could be something out of the gym that shows that they have extreme loyalty to the group or that they showed like integrity in a situation. Because to me, it's more important, like show up, have a good attitude. Don't be a piece of shit. One of the dudes we had to get rid of, like, it's like, bro, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm not here to hear about how you're cheating on your wife. Like, get, get the fuck out. Of, like, anybody who's got that chaos outside of the, outside of the gym, mm-hmm. I don't want it. Like, you have to be in my group. You got to have a job. Yeah. And, like, I don't care. Like, dude, someone want to be wild, single dude and fucking chase tail and get all. I get it. But, like, you're not going to be in my group and be a scumbag. So mm-hmm. that's part of it, too. Because, like, my life is chill. I don't yeah. have drama. <clears throat> So I'm not going to have somebody in my group that brings that shit because all of a sudden I'm getting messages from your wife. Where is he at? And I'm not dealing with that. We're not going. I'm almost 38. We're not going. Yeah. Back. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a representative of you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the other thing, too, is that uh, actually like this is a really cool story. We were just out in Utah uh, for APF Nationals. And Spandy um, 
<laughs> First of all, he shows up. He's got a mullet. He's got blonde oh, hair. But yes. now he's got a fucking cornrow. Shout now. out. Spindy. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah he's got, he got cornrows. Wait, he's 148 and has a has a cornrows. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, he's legit, and and he's, sick. And yeah. he shows Shout up in like a fucking green, black and pink Nike windsuit. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. My man's, yeah. fuck my man's, yeah. my man's yeah. got drip. Like he's he's the sick. Yeah, he's like walking through the tunnel for the game. Exactly. He's the sickest. So he he went he went he went. What was it? Five for six in the first. It was three for three on squats, two for three on bench. He's having a great day. The judging there was very ticky tacky. Whatever. I didn't think that it was the most consistent. It was pretty tough. So gets to deadlifts and he kind of got, I think on his first deadlift, they made a bad call. They called him for up down. I didn't think it was up down. We had him retake it. And then he got, and then he hitched it because he was, he was fucking tired. We're 2,000, 4,000 feet above sea level, whatever. Yeah. And you see it on his face. Like he he like he's mad he's upset, and uh, and <clears throat> I'm standing next I forget who I'm standing next to I'm standing next to one of my guys and he goes don't do that like quietly to me he's like don't you fucking do that, and I guess he caught eyes with Val in the like Spandy did, and Val went like this shake their hand like went like this shake their hands like lipped it to him and his face just totally changed shook all the judges hands and got off. And then in private, he was like, fuck those guys. You know, whatever, had yeah, his yeah. moment. And I told him after, he was like so upset that he, like he's 18, dude. This was his first big meet. He's only been powerlifting for a year. And uh, I pulled him aside after and I was like, dude, first of all, super proud of you for putting your hat in the ring. That, that's what this is about, right? Like the, life is for a man in the arena. Um, so I'm very proud of you there. I'm very proud of how you performed today. I think you did a great job in really tough circumstances. The thing I'm the most proud of is when you got called on that last deadlift, every single person in this building knew that you were pissed and upset and you didn't act like an asshole and you represented me well. Because if you had gone off, everyone's going to remember you because of how you look, bro. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. And if you get a bad reputation, it takes a long time to fucking get rid of it. And because you look different, everyone's going to remember you for good or bad. And I was like, you showed a lot of integrity in that moment and you were a professional. And like, it was really cool to have that moment because I was like, if you flipped out there, you would make me and Val look bad. And we've been advocating for you since the very beginning. So I really appreciate that. And that's like part of the group, right? Because if that kid had flipped out right then, like he's not training with us anymore. He's yep. out the fucking door. You're not going to make me look like an asshole. I've been in this game for a long time and I've, I had a bad reputation and I had to work to clean it up and I'm not fucking having somebody else ruin that for me. And so like our guys, it's, the personality shit's more important than the numbers in my group, but also they're all killers. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? They wouldn't last in the group if they weren't because we're hard on them. Yeah. So. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about, like, from when you transition from, like, obviously, like, West Side and shit to having your own place, having your own crew, and, like, what did you like and that you took with you to your place and your your crew and everything, and then what did you not specifically like that you didn't take? So from West Side, there's like it's it's, it's two faceted, right? It's multifaceted because it's like from West Side and then also from like Doghouse with Dave, right? Because mm -hmm. those are two things. Because like it already got trimmed down <laughs> from from West Side to Doghouse, like the shit, the fat got trimmed with like what we wanted to deal with. Like it was like a West Side, I had to be like careful about what I posted, like trying to make money was weird. It wasn't, it was only about lifting weights. Yeah. And they didn't really fuck with all the like online training stuff. Then they do now. Cause you know, <laughs> uh, but they, <laughs> they didn't at the yeah. time, you know what I'm saying? And so I had to kind of like downplay my shit. Like I never wore trigger warning stuff when I fucking trained there until I came back in the night or whatever. But like, it was always, and it was like, I couldn't, push my stuff because it was it, they would make me feel goofy about it were the other guys feeling that way too what like they? the guys uh at doghouse oh like, well at doghouse it or was, was it just you that like were all those guys already at training at doghouse no and, no 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 it was so we all had gotten booted together okay. right so it was okay. like the whole like like me dave co like you know i got the yeah. call like oh we got kicked out like you know and we all just went there no one's like dude if you're training with dave hoff and dave hoff gets kicked out you're going wherever the fuck he's going yeah you know what i'm saying my bags were packed i was fucking out <laughs> so <clears throat> it got trimmed down from there but i would say from west side something that i that i took and i instill in my guys is like there's no fucking excuse like there's no excuse there's a line in west side versus the world it's uh uh mike jester says it and he's like 
you know, I saw him max out the story, you know, the hole in his neck and his, his leg in a cast. He's like, in that moment, you realize, like, whatever you got going on, it's no, no excuse. There's never a fucking excuse. And it's been, like, it's been a tough two years for me out there. I've had a lot of injuries. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And my guys have seen me, like, go through it where I'm like, dude, you're not going to, I'm not going to, this isn't going to stop me. Like, I'm almost 38. All of them are younger than me except for one of them. And, like, so that's something I instill in my guys. Like, I don't give a fuck if you're hurt. Like, I don't want you to get hurt more, but you're still fucking training. So, like, if you can't bench, you're doing something else. You're doing extensions. You're doing whatever the fuck. You can't squat? Cool. You're dragging a fucking sled. You're doing reverse hypers. Like, there's always a way to be getting better. And that's something. So, like, that's a West Side sort of mentality. They brought, now, West Side, it went a little bit further. Like, we don't save pecs around here. Like, we definitely save pecs where I'm at. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's, like, showing guys that there's, like, uh, <clears throat> that you – you must do more. You must do that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something I took from us. The shit that I didn't take from there is like, listen, man, like we're, we're adults. We got jobs. Like people got families. Like, bro, like I, what I told the new guy, this is what I said to him. I said, listen, if you can't make it because your wife's in the hospital, your kid's in the hospital, I get it. But if your kid's sick and your wife's stressed out, you better fucking be here. I don't care if your wife's stressed out. That has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? There's a fucking, <clears throat> it's not a very gray line. It's very straightforward. It's like your kid broke his fucking arm and he's in the hospital. Of course, dude, go to the hospital. We'll see you the next time. Kid twists his ankle and your wife's stressed out because of work and she's up your ass. I don't know, man, figure it out. That's none of my fucking business. So where the line is, I'm just as strict as it was there. But my line is a little different. Cause back, cause the West Side it was like they didn't give a fuck. Like, no you, matter what, yeah, no matter what, you're fucking there, and that's how I live my life. That's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I just got over like crazy, like infection in my jaw and all this shit. I thought I was having a fucking stroke, dude. My whole head was like kind of swollen, all this shit, and like I deadlifted that night, like that was way. <laughs> because that's who I am, mm -hmm. dude. We're sitting. There. <laughs> I didn't squat. They wouldn't let me squat. I'm sitting there and I'm like, so I'm good to go back. I can work out tonight. Like, you know, and uh, the nurse is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Val's sitting there like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, why don't you tell her what that means? <laughs> and I'm like, well, oh, like squatting, you know, like no big deal. And she's like, t she looks at him. She's like, well, tonight is a light night for Anthony, so he'll be taking between seven and 900 pounds for multiple sets. <laughs> <laughs> and, the la and the lady's like, no, don't do that. Like, uh. So then I got in a group text message with all my guys and Val, and I was like, I want to let you guys know that Val says that I can't train tonight, and I need you guys to have my back. Don't answer this fucking wrong. Can I work out tonight? Like, we're going to have a vote. <laughs> and Val <laughs> immediately was just like, if you let him bully you into t saying he can train, I'll never respect any of you guys. <laughs> so, it, like, it devolved into, like, madness. They said I should wear a helmet and all this shit. But, uh, but, but basically, like, basically, like, yeah, like, basically, uh, you, you got to show up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can, if you can run the hooks, if, you, if you're so fucked up, that you can't train, you better be loading plates. You better be fucking doing something, filling my water bottle. Like, you better be doing something. Provide value. Yes. Bring something to the table. Because the value mm. that I fucking bring is 10 years in the sport, and I've trained with everybody that you could fucking possibly imagine. And that's what I bring. I bring a world record. I bring mm -hmm. a fucking pedigree that's pretty fucking long. And I've trained with guys who are the best. And so what are you fucking bringing? And I don't really care if your elbow hurts. It doesn't fucking matter to me. Like, you better bring something to help. Um, as far as, so that's my long-winded answer. As far as uh, <clears throat> coming from, you know, doghouse, like, the, ch the change there is Dave is, uh, Dave's big on, like, kind of throwing people to the fire a little bit, not letting you know what you're going to be doing necessarily. He keeps it really close to the chest because... I think a lot of times it's to see how you react and, and other times it's because he's not sure what he wants to do yet. Mm -hmm. and he's kind of figuring it out. Because when you get to a certain level, it's like intuitive. You know, I'm sure there's a day that Corey comes in here and he's like not doing what y'all are doing because he's got a fucking tweak or he's doing yeah. it or whatever. Um, <clears throat> our goals change or, or whatever. So I like to be pretty upfront with my guys. I let them know. Like on Monday or two weeks out, I'll be like, hey, two Fridays from now we're free squatting. 
make sure you, you know you got your gear in line and you're, you're fucking eating and all that stuff so i give them a little bit more of a heads up they know what we're going to be doing ahead of time my thought process is for a lot of guys there's so much anxiety involved in knowing what they're going to do and what they have to prepare for mm -hmm. and going into a meet there's that anxiety so instead of testing them what they're going to do when they don't know i go the other way where it's like i let them know like yes yeah, sit with that anxiety and think about it for two weeks mm -hmm. and then if they don't fucking perform then it's like what it's the like fuck? what the fuck <laughs> then then yeah, yeah then, it's they all mental then yeah, yeah. so yep. so you I, that's like one of the the differences between the two because i think that everybody's got a different coaching style you know, and so my coaching style, Dave, Dave has really been helpful with how I address these guys and how I work with these guys and whatever. So I just take stuff that he has done for me and I try to do it with them. Like I, he gave me, Dave gave me just this fucking unwavering belief in myself. Like he just, he convinced me that I had more in the tank when Lou said I had nothing left. So I try to do that with my guys. You know, I'll just like say shit. Be like, yeah, man, you can squat a thousand. You just haven't yet. You will though. You know, you can do that. And I try to like give them the confidence because they yeah. haven't been around somebody. Because at first it's all shock and awe. They're looking at me yeah. they're like, oh my goodness, like this guy's fucking strong. It's like, yo, you can do that too. You just haven't yet. Yeah. And I try to like pump them up that way as opposed to going the other way. Like Lou would go the other way. Lou would tell you, you're not going to do shit to try and get the bulldog out of you. Mm -hmm. You know, that. I respond well to that, but most guys don't. So sure. I'm still feeling out who can take the heat and who can't. <laughs> most of them can't. I got like some pretty sensitive. I don't mean sensitive in a bad way, but they're they're nice dudes. These guys are they're nice kids. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're they're nice people. So well, it's not one size fits all. Yeah, and so I try. Yeah. So one of them, you know, Corey, I can give him a little more shit. We battle a little bit more on deadlifts, and we'll talk shit to each other. He's a military guy. He's a SWAT guy. Yeah. He's 290 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, he's not fucking intimidated. So, like, me and him can bark at each other. Mm -hmm. Some of the other guys, they need more of, like, a pat on the butt as opposed to a kick in the ass. Yeah. And, that's a, and, and that distinction, I think, is important to make. You can't treat everyone the same. Like what you said, one size mm -hmm. doesn't fit all, especially with coaching and especially with this sport. Like, sometimes, you know, like Josh at his last meet, he pulled 699 point something. Because it's a kilo meat. Yeah. So that's my bad. I called for that. I, I sh we should have gone seven hundred four. Listen or seven hundred five. Like whatever, right? Six ninety nine. They had rounded up the last decimal, so it said seven. I should have known better. So with him, he's a pretty like, um, he takes everything to heart. So I'm I'm pretty good to him that way, and he's a good friend of mine. But uh, he's doing reverse hypers, and they, like I mean they were fucking they weren't full reps, so it's like. That's the one time I've really given it to him where I was just like, hey, bro, that looks like a 699 deadlift sort of fucking <laughs> reverse hyper. Like, I don't know, man. For me, I'd want a fucking like 750 type of reverse hyper. But if you want to do 699, you can fucking keep doing it that yeah. way. And he's like, well, it would have been if you yeah. could yeah. count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that pushed him a little bit and just figuring out how to get the most out of everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to squeeze because I think that Louis got the most he could out of me. And the most he could get out of me was 2364 or 2350. That was the most he could get from me. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, two meets later, I totaled 25. So in his way, he got the best. He squeezed all the juice out, right? And for me, I'm trying to figure out how to get people to a point where it's like there is no end. I can keep getting more from them and I can keep building them up because I'm on the tail end of my career. I'm on the back side, dude. I'm fucking almost 38. I probably got another five, six years of this, whatever. So I want to make sure that when I'm fucking step out from the competitive role and I step more into a coaching role that I've got dudes around that are fucking seasoned and they are motherfuckers to compete against. Mm -hmm. Like I want them to be the bad motherfuckers <clears throat> that can step in and like carry the legacy. Yeah. <clears throat> That's sick. You talk about like uh, being prepared and letting your guys know what happens. I, I always like we found out that we just fucking compete better whenever we have like two weeks basically notice to go compete. Like the, <laughs> yeah. like every time we've basically said eight weeks from now, we're going to program to where we do a meet. It's all fucking mental. And then by the time we get to the meet, it's already like, let's get this fucking thing over with. I've been ready to do this. That's for a six weeks so now. football player. Yeah. Football player. Soccer. No, soccer. So it, what did you, did you play sport? F football. 
basketball. What did you do? Soccer. Soccer. So it's like those are uh, reactive sports, right? Like mm-hmm. they're so. What I found is like you're in the moment. You have to react in the moment. Those guys are better at like the quick, like the the quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a, if you're a goalie in hockey, you're better at the slow buildup because you have to sit there and wait and mm-hmm. think about it the whole fucking time. <laughs> so if you're a place kicker, you probably do better with a 12 week prep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're a fucking old lineman, you probably do better with a two week prep because it's just like rage. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I've noticed that with some of my athletes that I coach that there's like a, uh, there's a difference in personality. Mm-hmm. Some guys do really well with just like, let's go. And some people do really well with, okay, and you need to meticulously plan this out. And yeah. so, you know, everything that's going to happen. So, with your coaching and stuff with like your online clients or even the guys in your crew, had you had to deal with you guys, you guys set out this six weeks or eight weeks to go to do this meet. And then you see the guy who, where they go in there, their warmups, not feeling how it should be. Some fucking shit's going on. Maybe the guys are rapping so long or some dude passes out or something like that. And you have to watch them react to, okay, now this situation that I thought was going to be perfect is now blown up. Oh yeah. That that's like, yeah. And, and then you see who the killer is. Then you can fucking like, then you see like, all right, man, we no fucking options. We're here. You're not going to not do it. Right. Like you're going to do it. Right. So that, uh, thanks for the alley-oop on the story here. So we're out in Utah <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's sneaky. Yeah. So, uh, so we're out in Utah and, and Josh, um, takes his last warm up to a one board. I'm like, press, press. He doesn't press. And I'm like, yo, we pull it off. I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, I'm like, what the fucking happened? He's like, I passed out. And I was like, Jesus Christ. So he had cut like 11 pounds. The altitude's crazy. It was hot as fuck. And I'm like, all right. Like, you okay? He says, yeah. I'm like, well, he's like, what should I do? I'm like, what do you want to do? Like, have you ever passed out before? I go, well, I said, what do you want to do? He said, whatever you tell me. Which is like coach's dream. Like, <laughs> I love that. And uh, I was like, have you ever passed out before? He said, no. I said, how'd the weight feel in your hands? He said, light. I was like, mm. he goes, what would you do? I said, I'd fucking keep my shirt on and run it. Fuck a token. Like, let's just go, right? So, ah, <laughs> so, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like, that's just how I'm running it at that point, right? So we go out, first one, brings it down, kind of like bobbles it. Now, I brought my own side spotters for this because I, I wanted people on the sides that knew what he looked like when he benches normally so we could save him if something happened. So he's bringing it down. It kind of bobbles. And then it, you see it kind of like just, bleh. and so we pull it off of him. And I look down at him. His eyes are wide open. He's out. And he's just, and I'm like, Josh, hey, are you with me? Hey, buddy. He goes, I don't know. And then I go, hey, are you here? And he goes, Jesus Christ. And then he comes back too. And we stand him up and we're like, all right. And I look at him like, you're going to take another one, right? <laughs> 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 like I had already looked at the table and been like, yeah, run it again, you know? And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he's like, yeah. So we loosen his, loosen his shirt up, and then have him take like a fucking nasty ammonia hit beforehand, like mm. to like let's fucking go, right? So it works to wake people up. Maybe it worked to not let you go to sleep in the first place. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's right or not yeah. or whatever. So Makes sense. he comes down. Now his mom and dad are there. His mom's a fucking uh, an ER nurse, so oh, she's shit. tripping. And we know that, you know, people pass out all the time. Shit happens. But, you know, like, it is kind of scary. And so <laughs> he takes the second one down, and I'm watching. I'm counting him down, like, three inches, two inches, one. He's getting close. He gets the press gun. Bah! He comes up, and then he kind of, like, bobbles it forward. And we take it from him. So I didn't know this, but he was out. He passed out after. He didn't even remember hearing the press command. He told me afterwards that he didn't hear a press command all day. He was out by the time he's getting a press command. So he had just, like, instinctively been like, Burr, and then, like, you know, the dumped fuck? it. So we take it and uh, <laughs> so fucking funny. I'm like, all right, let's go. I mean, now we know you can press it. So just do it right. And you're fine. <laughs> and then the last one, he brings it down and like this, you know, the like the slow dump, like in a bench shirt, you'll see someone. Like, yeah. Burr. So he like slow windmilled. Like he came out and was like, burr, like this thing. <laughs> and uh, so he fucking pulled the bar up. I'm like, hey, are you okay? And he's again, eyes open, out, cold, and starts to like, kind of like have a kibby. Yeah, and uh, his mom runs on the platform, pulls his legs up, you know, to like get the blood back in. And we stand him up and everything. And uh, this, I'm getting back to your question about like when the <laughs> circumstances are not great. 
and uh, so like he just worst. so he bombed right so he bombed yeah. at nationals the first time he's traveled for a meet his fucking family was there he traveled cross country for this and he's like so upset you know and he's just like oh man i feel like i let you down and i feel like you know i'm like dude first of all you did not let me down and he's like just you know i feel like a pussy and i'm like no listen dude you would have let me down if when you passed out in the warm-up room you said i'm out i'm not even trying you fucking passed out under trying to bench a weight four times you're a fucking savage what are you talking about <laughs> yeah. i was like bro and i'm like this is just what happens right so then i looked at him and i was just like the the hard part about this is that in our sport you're gonna have to work your ass off for six months to maybe do better than you did today yep you don't get to just turn around and, and like it's not like football or hockey or whatever where it's like you got another play coming in a minute, you can show people that that was a fucking mistake and I'm better than that, right? You have to, Now you got to wait like six months to do that. And I was like, that's the bummer. The good thing is now we get to see how you respond. Mm -hmm. And that is the opportunity that we have right now mm -hmm. is to see how you fucking respond. And you can see him like he would have gone and trained right then. He was like fired up in that moment, yeah. you know. And like he was texting me today. He's like, am I allowed? This was a week ago. He's like, am I allowed to drag a sled today? Because I was like, you're not working out for a week. You're fucking just like eat and sleep and whatever. Yeah. See, he's already like, you know, he dragged a sled last night. And he's back into it. But you see what somebody's made of in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you can see if somebody is, listen, man, like you don't have to be willing to die to do this. Like, I don't believe in that. You don't have to. Be. That's how I am. But you, that's, you don't have to be that way. But seeing like that somebody's got that dog is fucking mm -hmm. sick and now i know that like for sure the sky is the limit with that kid because i watched it happen yeah. and you can't replicate that except for it's like you can't gain experience without having these experiences there's no like shortcut for that there's no uh <clears throat> the, what is it? i was reading a book the other day it said it's like there's no uh there's no like algorithmic system uh, to shorten like experience or something like that. So there's no yeah. cheat to get the experience. And so now he has that and now we get to watch him grow from it. For sure. Yeah. How, how, much, how much was, how much was the bar weight in his hands? 402. Oh, so nothing like crazy, but yeah, like, crazy. I mean, we're lucky he didn't fucking break his <laughs> yeah, arm. For, yeah. You're lucky. He just didn't fucking <laughs> yeah. So face, we're so. just, you know, it, and yeah. Hey, like, and he had squatted 777 and had just missed like 820 yeah. at 220. So, you know, he had been through and he cut 11 pounds or whatever. So he, you know, he's a pretty good lifter. Like he's going to be great. I, th I believe that he'll be fucking great. Like mm -hmm. not just good. I think that he will be very, very fucking good. You know, I think it's like a rite of passage. I think everyone needs to have like a shit show meet. You have to. Like yeah. you, you have, have to, to go through a absolute shit show meet where you walk out of there and saying, I'm like just a worthless piece of shit. But fuck, that was kind of a good story. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do I know? Do I even know how to lift weights? <laughs> yeah. I've had those before where I'm just like, I, I bombed out of a meet in Cincinnati Lou said that we were going to, um, he thought I was going to break the world record at 42 and, uh, I bombed. So the record would have been 1160 and I bombed out with 1047 <laughs> <laughs> missed it three times. So I had to drive from Cincinnati to New Hampshire that night. That was the plan. And I remember just like driving, just being like, do I even like, what am I even doing? Like, do I even know how to fucking lift a weight? Like, <laughs> yeah. You fucking pussy, like you idiot. Like, what are you doing? You're ruining your life for no reason. Like, like, you know, like I remember the first time I went back in the gym, I was like, couple of, couple of sets, whatever. I'm putting my briefs on and I'm like hanging on the thing, like putting my briefs on. And I was like, I had this thought. I was like, am I ever gonna have another big squat? Like, am I ever gonna? And then that day, I squatted 905, no knee wraps and briefs. So I was like, oh, I think I'll be okay. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we'll be okay. But yeah, like those moments where. You kind of find out what you're made of. It's that same <clears throat> shit. I'm sure all of you guys have gone through it with sports or lifting where you're like, mm -hmm. all right, like I can either curl up and and be a sad boy or I can, you, you know, know. I, I had that. Yeah. I had that moment. You can either be a bitch or you cannot. Right. Yeah, yeah dude. And it's it, dude. I hate sounding like that, like OG, like fucking football coach, like waters for the week, like that bullshit. But sometimes like, it's but true. So, sometimes, sometimes it's you, true. Yeah. But sometimes you got to like let him like need water really bad. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like you <laughs> gotta let him you gotta yeah, you gotta let him be thirsty. Yeah, make yeah, it yeah, make him starve for a minute. You Act know like what they're I mean? in the desert for real. Yeah, and they I they need that. I, I like that and it's also there's something to like stepping up to the fucking like step like step the fuck up and show everybody that you're different, right? So I have uh I have my I got two like back to back ones that are like they're conjoined. So I was 
uh, I tweaked my knee pretty bad with 11, 15, like three years ago. I had nerve damage in my leg. I lost a full inch of circumference on my left quad in eight weeks. Damn. I'll show you the video before I leave. Like my fucking leg, like you, it was fucking crazy. Squatted ten thirty seven, with basically like what we thought was like it was like necrotic leg. Like it was fucking re- dude. It was ridiculous. Anyway, so uh, I've had weird stuff with my knee. We're going to the the gym to free squat. I hadn't taken anything over a thousand in a little bit. <clears throat> We're in prep, and uh, I had just watched part of West Side versus the World where he talks about his knee blowing off and he said I felt my knee slide and then Chuck said take another one he blew his knee off so I took like 10 30 and I felt something weird in my knee and the plan was to go 10 65 and I get my uh sorry and I get my uh knee wraps for 10 65 and I get it and I'm like I can feel myself like tearing like do like tearing up almost or like I don't want to take this fucking weight right now like I don't want to do it but I have to because if I don't then I don't get to be the guy. Like, I can't have my guys load up 1065 and then me not take it. I have to, or I'm not different. I'm the fucking same. And I'm different. So fuck this. And I did it and it felt really good, right? And I had that moment of like, mm-hmm. yeah, motherfucker, you're not going to, like, the point of doing this is because it's scary. You don't ride a motorcycle because it's safe. You ride mm-hmm. a motorcycle because it's scary and it's wild. And that's, and it's the same thing with this shit. Like, I don't squat four digits because. Like my squats don't have commas on them because I'm, I don't like scary shit. I like scary shit. That's the point of it, right? So you have to go to it. So I had that experience. That was in prep for semifinals, and then in semifinals, it came last deadlift to win. I had to pull seven fifty five. Now, like, that's a ninety five percent deadlift for me, and it was a quick day. I was like, I, I didn't know if I could get it. And you start giving yourself excuses. You know how like you'll sit there and you'll be like. You know, you're playing sports. There's like two minutes left. It's like, well, we didn't make it to the finals. So mm-hmm. even if we fuck this up, we at least made it to the final. And those little, like, your, your bitch assness starts, like, seeping in. And I remember, like, putting the chalk on my hands and sitting there and just being like, you don't have an option to miss this. If you get this, you're different. And if you miss it, you're just like everyone else. And I just like didn't give myself the opportunity to miss it. Like I was like, you will not because you're not like all these other motherfuckers. You're different. And like having that moment, the only way you can have those moments is by having meets like Josh had where you fall apart and you have to come back together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You figure out like what you're fucking made of. And there is like something to be in like uh, like a masculine male competitor like alpha, like whatever buzzword you want to use to be like, nah, dude, like this ain't going to break me. I'm I, savage. This doesn't happen Primal. to me. <laughs> like the lift doesn't alpha. happen to me. I happen to the fucking lift. Mm. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? And mm. that's like a big thing that I try to put in my guys. Like, don't let the weight tell you where the fuck you're going. You put it where you want. That's fucking right. <laughs> that's it's fucking like, right. I'm ready to train now. Yeah, like, yeah, ah. yeah. It's like, fucking close. so, <laughs> so for, for the people that listen to this that like don't understand like powerlifting as much like you have to find that situation for yourself and like i'm like i love kobe and jordan and yeah. i've i've rewatched the last dance like 15 times Bro, because it's the same thing yeah. i just that's finished, my lunch i will yeah. i watch it while i eat lunch dude like, like that's, if that's, you listen to relentless by tim brover who was the trainer of kobe and jordan he talks about okay. just being a fucking dog like all right when it comes to it do you got that fucking dog in you or not? And it's like, it's relative for everybody. Cause I'm sitting here and here and you talk, I'm like, I'm a fucking pussy. Like you're out here <laughs> squatting thousands of pounds, but it's, it's relative for us. Cause we go through the same thing every week. It's like on a Wednesday, it's like, well, I, yeah. it's four o'clock in the morning. I went to bed at fucking 1130. I'm tired. I don't fucking feel good, but that motherfucker thinks he's going to beat me. And I promise you, he's fucking not. I love that. And it's like, he probably is thinking nothing like that in his head, but it's like, I'm going to fucking kill you yeah. today. Yeah. Don't you think that that's part of business too? Like with Which what y'all I, I was about to say yeah. in business, yeah. like, dude, it, like anytime you have to put your, it, just in life, anytime you have to put yourself out there, you have to have the self-talk of like, mm-hmm. I am a fucking doll. Basically. Yeah. I, like if you're, yes. if you're pitching yourself to like work with someone, you can't go on to this business call and pitch a proposal acting like a little hoe exactly. thinking like, oh, what if they, they don't accept it? No, motherfucker, you go in there saying they will accept it. And this is what I'm going to fucking do. Cause I'm good at what I do. I'm confident. Like yep. I like it took a long time for me. I used to always qualify everything I said, be like, listen, now I'm not the best at this, but I know a few things. And now I'm like, nah, I'm one of the best in the fucking world. Motherfucker. Yep. That's and why they're coming to you. Test yep. me. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I'll go toe to toe with anybody with this shit. And, and with the business stuff, like, 
you know, you guys like, I know you guys, you like work under Corey, but you're entrepreneurs, like how you, how you run stuff. You know what I mean? Like getting a chance to work with you like more closely now, like y'all are hustlers. I know that like I've worked with all you guys, basically like you guys are all hustlers. And like the only way you get that way is to have the confidence to put yourself out there and be like, yo, I can do this for you. Like, like we started talking about the website stuff, the emails and everything. Like you, you just like hit me with it. Like, yo, I can do this for you. This is what's going to fucking happen. This is what we're going to do. And like, we're going to make it happen for you. And I, and I'm confident in that. Right. And it's all worked out. It's been mm-hmm. fucking great. However, that does not, I'm not hiring you guys to do that or asking you guys to help me do that. If you don't have the confidence, right. in showing me like th- there's, there's so many parallels with business and fucking lifting weights. It, they cross over so much. And a lot of it is just like the confidence and, and no, and being like, not being a bitch about it like it's like so simple you know and we were trying to get the fucking uh the loan for this gym like i was uh, man i went through like fucking whatever 10 different banks and i remember i got a phone call they're like yeah we denied your loan all this shit i called my mom i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do like oh this fucking thing it's a shit show like all this stuff right and i allowed myself like five minutes to be a whiny little fucking pussy wet blanket yeah and then I was like, nope, no one can fucking save you. Like, mm-hmm. you either figure this, like, there's no, like, no one else is desperate to make this work. No one else, there's no, like, um, desperation for anyone else, dude. Like, you, if you just say, fuck it, I'm not buying this gym, nothing changes for anyone except, like, and your life stays exactly how it is. Are you happy with it how it <clears> is, or do you want more? Oh, you want more? Cool, well, you can't be a pussy about this, and you have to go fucking do it. Mm-hmm. And you can sit there and be sad for a minute, allow the sadness to seep in and fucking whatever, put on it's just Kenny like, G it's, and take a bath. It's and just like, fucking, missing your like second attempt. and then move yeah. on. You it's know just I mean? like missing your second attempt. Yeah, dude. You get, exactly a mo- you get a moment to be like, all right, well, that sucks. I'm a fucking pussy. And now I have to go do it. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've had those moments too, man. 2020, yeah. uh, 2020 super finals. I was sitting there and I'm like, I was down 0-2 on a fucking bench. Um, and my coach had died. I've talked about this. My, my, my hockey coach had died in the past, uh, you know, and I dedicated that prep to him. And we were down, I was down 0-2. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm putting chalk on my hands. And I'm like, you start thinking the bitch ass, dude, just starts, here it comes, dude. It starts, and you're like, well, I could probably sneak in a meet like, in a couple months, I could get another qualifying total. So I get into start thinking and as I'm putting the chalk on. And then my homie DB, he's standing behind me. My coach's name was, his last name was Fru. And uh, I started hashtagging for Fru on everything. And I'm like sitting there and the like, bars loaded. And I hear DB just goes, this one's for Fru. And I was like, scared. Like I had like, it just like, I had like this fire where it's like, no dude, like you get this or you break your fucking arm. Like you just do it. You know what I mean? And those moments like, they sh- they really show you what you're fucking all about, cause you can't fake that funk mm-hmm. like that. You either got that uh-huh. or you don't, and you can't teach it. You know what I mean? And the only way to show you can't teach it, and also the only way for someone to show you that they have it is to be put in a situation where it's like, you know, not literally, but it's like gun to your head, bro. What the fuck are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. You know, not to be dramatic about it, but it's like, I know, bro. You just traveled all the way to fucking Chicago during a national pandemic, and you gotta fucking either make this bench or be the biggest pussy in the world and miss it. <clears throat> <laughs> Just straight up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I ended up uh, being on the podium for that. I mean, I came in third Fuck in yeah. Super Finals and got to stand on the podium with fucking Dave Hoff. Like, Fuck yeah. that's Epic. a lifetime yeah. goal. You know what I mean? I got that shit. I got my two WPO medals hung in my office on a tack on the wall. Uh, and the only other thing that's hung on that tack is the uh, flower headdress that we put on my dog. We took her end of life photos. Cause that's how much that shit means to me. It's like Damn. this, like this, like little Fuck thing yeah. where it's like, that is outside of my wife. That is fucking everything to me. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And you, you get rewarded for being a fucking psycho. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys want to do a quick round of small arm says, and then we'll wrap it up. A small arm we'll, says. We'll, we'll, we'll ask like one question. Yeah, sure. You, go. you lead off. No, no, you go ahead. I'm, you caught me off guard. Troy, you go yeah. first. Um, Hit me with something, bro. Dude, listen. Or okay, uh, you can take a minute if you I want. I can go. On, no, so, your, I'm right, so right, lean. Right. You know? So uh, you, you look I'm good. So lean. <laughs> you look good. 
You look trim. If there was like a powerlifting GQ, you'd probably be. Like, it's <laughs> fucked up. Hold on, it's fucked up because like literally, like fucking less than two minutes before he said, I looked at him and I was like, "Man, you look." Yeah, lean. you yeah, told yeah, me yeah. I look. I'm lean like, oh. like, I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, man, you lose some, you lose some weight or something. Yeah. You look yeah. good, so and then you say to me like, "I didn't lose weight." So what's yeah. like the ultimate compliment for you then? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> what's your blood pressure? You look fucking <laughs> like you're having a hard time breathing. <laughs> That's okay. I want mother, right. I want people you to say like, you look healthy. I'm Did like you just run around the block. Fuck that dude, I want to be like you look sickly or so big. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, when you were talking about all the stuff that you're dealing with in the gym, I there was a, a lot of parallels that I pulled from like Corey and like being coached by him, like because Corey learned from the like. <laughs> The two literal fucking goats, Arnold and Louie. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I have to filter this shit and then deal with a bunch of, like, fucking dudes who think that they're sweet or think that they're something and, like, trying to, like, navigate all this shit. And and we've been around for so long that it's like I've seen so many fucking iterations of this crew that it's like where we started, like, even when it was a 5 a.m. crew to when Corey started – Max effort, he switched it to the 4 a.m. crew. And then, like, even, like, the, the guys that he started that with, like, I was part of it. But, like, the guys who made the push to go to 4, they're not even here anymore. Yeah. So, it's, like, you need guys to help you make that push. But then, like, they end up, like, serving their time. And then it's just kind of – it's kind of done. Like, I don't know if you've dealt with that. Um, but, like, how – is it tough to deal with? I'm, I'm sure, like, it weighs on you differently as than it weighs on As far as guys me. coming and going? Yeah. Yo, there are motherfuckers that used to beat me at every meet that have barbell tattoos in very visible places that don't even lift weights anymore. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't give a fuck if you never lift a weight. I've said it to guys in my group. I don't care if you never lift a weight again. I'm here. If you want to fucking come along for the ride, we can can get that fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. we can lift some fucking weights. It is... The hardest part is when you invest your time into somebody and then they quit. Yep. And that's why I'm very careful with who I invest my time in because it's a, uh, you know, me and Corey have talked about it. It's weird because Corey and I are very different type of people and very similar, mm-hmm. you know, and we've had very similar experiences too. Like, you know, he's got Arnold and Lou. I got Lou and Dave, yep. like, you know, it's the same thing. And then I look at Corey as like, one, I mean, like I got Cor- like Corey's the guy with the business thing that like, you know what I mean? He helped me with a lot of that stuff. So we've gone through a lot of stuff, but it is uh i've just stopped believing people honestly when they're like i want to do this forever i'm like okay well i don't believe you <laughs> and we'll see we'll see yeah. when you get when you get fucked up we'll see you know what i'm saying cuz i know for me i've been fucked up weights have fucked me up and it didn't stop me for a minute like you know what i mean like i've had times where it's like I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift weights again. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to, but like I am. And, and, and so I just stop believing people and I invest in people that I think will be around for the longest. Um, but I know a lot of guys that said they were going to do this for a really long time. And now they do jujitsu instead. Well, mm-hmm. and, and we have a lot of guys who uh, say that they're about it. And then Corey goes on vacation and it's like the rules change. Mm-hmm. Fuck. That. And it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like, do y'all hold it down for him like that? Like if, yeah. like if he's gone and someone starts showing up late, like if he's gone for a week or whatever and someone shows up late, will you like be like, what the fuck, bro? Is it like that here? Nobody really show. I mean, we have guys that are like about about it, and then we have guys that are like kind of about it, and it's like different rules for different. Like there is like that. You kind of have to give. Like I look at some of the guys in my group, like you know that like. I don't want to get specific because I don't want to know who I'm talking about. But there's guys where I'm just like I let a little slide because I'm like. You're here for a good time, not for a long time, and that's cool. There's guys you know I mean? that come in that you're like, I know you're never going to push me in any sort of way, but you're here, and I respect it because you're here at 4 o'clock in the morning, and yeah. I know sometimes you're just not going to show up and push on, like, the main, like, you're not going to push me on bench day. Like, there's very few people that are going to push us on every lift. Right. And it's like, if you're not in that, like, small subset of motherfuckers that are, like, like, not to sound, like, conceited, but there's hardly any people in this gym, like, outside of, like, the true OGs that I give a fuck what they think. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you got to earn if, that. If somebody comes up and says something to me outside of, like, maybe three or four people in the morning, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. Like, don't even, don't even say anything. To you got to earn that. Like, you right. say hi to me, I don't say hi to you. 
<laughs> like type shit. But, I like it's like, but it's like some unspoken shit, right? Like you got to earn the right for me to come up and say something to you yes. because I've been here for a long fucking time. I don't know how much longer you're going to be around. I've seen a lot of motherfuckers like you come in the door and I've seen a lot of them go right back out the fucking door. Oh, yeah. It might be one year. It might be three years. It might be fucking six years. I don't know. But I've seen some people that I thought were going to be around a lot longer than I was that I've outlasted. Yeah. Just because what you said with you're going to show up no matter what. I know Corey's going to show up if he can't even fucking walk. So why yeah. would I not show up? Yeah. He gives that. That's the idea, right? So if you're the leader of the pack, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. And to speak on the original question, Val, my wife, has gotten on me before, and it, and it, and it used to piss me off, and now it makes sense. She's like, you hold yourself to a nearly impossible standard. You cannot expect other people to hold themselves to that same standard. You can just ask them to do their best. And and that changed it for me, you know, because, dude, like I'm a fucking psycho. Like I can't st I don't know how to stop. I used to think I was going to have like a fucking very graceful, dignified retirement from powerlifting. It ain't happening, dude. Bury me in my canvas. Fucking like it's over. Like they're going to roll me out of there. That's a good T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I already got it fucking designed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But like, you know, when you hold yourself to that high of a standard, like you're saying, like there's there's a base level of respect because you're here and you're lifting weights and I get it. And there's a baseline of respect, uh, but it takes it takes something else to get to that next level. And to speak to your point, it's basically like, yeah, man, it sucks to watch people come in and out. But I've learned to kind of separate that. And I just don't give people as much anymore, to be completely honest with you. I just don't give them. And it's not the, uh, I'll give them the programming. I'll give them the physical coaching. They don't get to, they don't get the stuff that's not on paper from me. They're not going to hear about what I have to do emotionally to do this shit, what it means. To, they don't get that. They get the baseline because that's where their respect level is at. Once you show me that you're fucking worth my time, I'll give it to you. The secret's in the extra stuff. The secret, I mean, we can all attest to it. The secret to Corey isn't the lifting weights. It's the business side of things. That's the easest part is the lifting the weights. The easiest part, yeah. That's, what, we, that's what this is all about, bro. outside of the weights <laughs> yes, is what different. makes the ultimate difference. Yes. Kind of in our Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in business, too, it's easy to fuck. Dude, yo, it's easy to pack T-shirts when you've already fucking made a couple racks on them. The hard part is the emails and the taxes and the bullshit, the LLCs and all of the fucking me raging on the phone. Sorry, Cole raging on the phone to Cole because my money hasn't come <laughs> in from the West and I'm sorry and all this stuff. <laughs> Public apology. Uh, you know, like that shit's not fun. Yeah. Um, lifting weights, fucking lifting weights and folding t-shirts yeah. easy. Like <clears throat> I would say all of us, like we all have a mutual respect for each other and we all understand we got a lot of shit fucking going mm -hmm. on outside of the gym. That's, that is the ultimate difference kind of. Is like the weights are fucking awesome and everything, but it's like, dude, are you? How's your business doing? How can we help each other grow everything to where our entire lives are better too? And we're strong as fuck, and we're jacked as fuck. I love that's that. kind of the ultimate goal. I love that. And there's some guys who teeter uh, weights, you know, more of this, where it's more business, but we have like a good mix. Yeah, I love that. And then, and then it comes down to the fact of like, um, just like general like camaraderie, you know, yeah. like. There's some guys in the locker room. You could be the star fucking quarterback, but if you can't lead anyone, then does nobody it, gives a fuck. Nobody, yeah, no man. one gives a fuck. There's a real. There's something that like I said it to. I said it to a kid I kicked out months later. I said, "Motherfucker, you could go 1,200, 800, 800. You still can't train with us. I give a fuck what your numbers are, because I don't want anything to do with you personally. Yep. Fuck you. And I need like I need this time to be where I can be 100 percent unfiltered and I can trust the people that I'm around and keep that in these walls. And I need it to be people that I can trust that are willing to pot potentially blow their bicep off, saving me from a bench press that I fucked up because I'm willing to do that. Right. So like, yeah, ooh, that fucking got That's me mad. Thinking about that. <laughs> Trayvon, Trayvon, question. I need to know what the fuck Anthony's eating. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, All right, bro. Let's break Check it down. It so I was on AF. Is this going on the? Uh, is this on the website or? Is uh, this, this is this is public, but this is public. Yeah. So yeah. I was on AF. I was doing that with the fasting and everything, and you nice. guys know. And I I had added like, I was doing one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, three meals and the spike, okay. right? So and my meals were, basically how I was doing the meals was like big pile of carbs, big pile of meat, every sauce. Yeah, whatever, yeah. right? Um, but I had like added in some stuff, so like 
when I would break my fast, I would do like, <laughs> bro, you know what all dressed chips are? All dressed? <laughs> all dressed. So it's like a, they're Humpty Dumpty's. They're a cross between. <laughs> their <laughs> <cry> yeah. bro, <laughs> bro, are you kidding? I'm going to have to ship you guys out soon. Okay. Uh, dude, this is, the, this is the most anabolic thing you can eat besides okay. waffles. Fuck all right. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on some shit, 14 okay. waffles a week minimum. So uh, nice. two a night. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're gonna eat yeah. one waffle. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. chocolate chip in there or what? <laughs> no, plain butter, okay. Kerrygold butter, and fucking oh, sugar butter on cheapest waffles. fucking syrup you can get. Give me the sugar. So, gangster. Uh, Give me the sugar. <laughs> that log cabin shit. That should be a sugar. <laughs> log, log cabin's wet. So, so yeah. uh, so wet. So, <laughs> but yeah, I would do all dressed chips, which is basically like a cross between like salt, vinegar, sour cream, and barbecue, like on wow. one chip. They're That's fucking lit. Dude, sounds, they're so good. What? And dunk them in French onion dip. Wait, hell yeah. Is this like like native to where in New Hampshire I or think shit? Humpty Dumpty what? is in New England. Is that what they're actually called? Oh, Humpty Dumpty is the brand. It's that? like Lay's. You know what oh, I'm saying? Gotcha. I, I wasn't calling that. myself Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'd rather be called that than lean. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah. So I would... I would <laughs> I would break. I would break the, my head. The most yoked Humpty yeah, Dumpty exactly. ever. Yeah, yeah, look at that, yeah. dude. That should That's be a, a t-shirt. Double entendre. <laughs> you need to get that designed up. <laughs> so, so I would break my fast with that. So I would have like a. Oh, a thing that's like sweet tea or iced tea with like a bag of chips and dip, and that's what I would like. That's how I break my fast, and then I would have my meals, right? Okay. Um, Fuck yeah! I couldn't put on weight. I couldn't keep the weight on with the fasting and shit. It, it worked for my lifestyle, but it, I, you know, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So. Um, it was easier out here because I wasn't as busy. So that second meal, I wasn't eating in a gym. I could eat it at my house. Gotcha. So um, I started doing, I basically wake up in the morning. I have, my wife is a gangster. She does all my food for me. I don't have to fucking do anything. She does the dishes. She does the food. She's the best. She's fucking, I can't say it Shout enough. Shout out. Shout out. So uh, y'all should have her on a podcast. At some point. Next sure. time we're out here. Now it's, I talked to her about it this time. Now it's been said and recorded. We got to have her out here. She's fucking awesome. Anyway, so, and she's a badass lifter. So she, she makes me, I get three packets of oatmeal uh, with like, she has like chocolate chips and walnuts too and all mm -hmm. this bullshit. Uh, protein shake uh, and like BCAs. Then I'll go and work out, I'll work at the gym for a few hours, come back. And then I have like, uh, like some sort of, meat rice sauce i've been really big on like getting like the pre-made like sweet and sour like chinese food sauce and mm. i'll get like she'll like use the air fryer and make some like air fried chicken nuggets Fuck fucking yeah. pineapple green pepper rice all in a bowl with the fucking sweet and sour oh, sauce yeah, on a protein funny. shake whatever and then my pre-workout anything from like another meal like that sometimes i do um you guys don't have it out here. Elio's Pizza. They're these frozen pizzas. They come in a rectangle box, and there's allegedly nine slices. <laughs> <laughs> there's three slices. Okay. So they're like <laughs> they're bitch slices. They're they're yeah. they're rec the rectangle pizzas like you got at school. Yeah. So oh, okay. Two gotcha. of those. Yeah. With a protein shake, you know, pre workout, and then I'll have like. Before your workout. Yeah, before workout. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, during workout, I'll have a. a <laughs> Shake it. I have a I have a apple before I eat before I work out and two scoops of carb one. So that's another like fifty grams of carbs, and um, and then like sour patch kids during and then uh, afterwards like protein shake another meal of just like meat and whatever and then uh, two waffles fucking protein shake go Fuck to bed. Yeah. I have a this delicious sweet snack before I go to bed. We don't call it a spike. <laughs> Not we'll, we'll, we'll be like, what are we having a sweet snack tonight? Like, yeah, we're having a sweet snack. So I'll have like ice cream or, or whatever and it's hard for me to keep weight on so i just yeah, try to like smash the food as much as i can and then on the weekends i basically just like eat like an unsupervised 12 year old like <laughs> whatever i want Fuck so yeah. yeah that's basically my diet i if i clean it up at all even if i like when i went from ground beef to chicken i lost five pounds like that dude like i have to have the fats i have to eat like it's I have a hard time consuming food like my stomach got fucked up a few years ago and so I have a hard time getting food in so I have to eat shit that tastes good because I just won't eat I'll literally sit there and be like nah I ain't eating that and like, you know what I mean so uh, I have to eat stuff that tastes good to me and I know that sounds fucking soft as shit but it just is what it is <laughs> you know what I mean but yeah I eat pretty I eat pretty well I'd say for a power lifter I eat like 70 30 70% clean, 30% absolute garbage bullshit. 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's working for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel strong. I feel like I'm the leanest I've ever been. I actually did a um, short stint with. The, have you seen those ads for those Flex Pro meals? That like Phil Heath is. Um, no. Oh out. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a subscription prep meal okay. thing. Don't fuck, dude. Like so. They were really good for like a week, two weeks. I did them for like a month and a half, but it's like a total scam that has no customer service. So canceling is like a legitimate fucking nightmare. Oh God. And they fucked me up. Dude, I was so fucking pissed. But I did that for like maybe three weeks, and I just like peeled those abs that I showed you earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I got those from that, and they just haven't gone away oh. yet. Yeah. Trying to get Damn. them to go away. Yeah, I'm gonna be sent, dude. I'm gonna be so fat the next time I come out here, so you can't call me lean. I'm still stuck on that. <laughs> Cole called him small. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Fucking yeah. a. I'm gonna sorry. get a T-shirt. It's like Cole. I am not lean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like to kind of tie it up, like going to like the business side of things with like trigger warning and stuff like that like i guess first and foremost when did when did trigger warning start or like where did that idea like come from uh yeah so uh the name was from one of my clients who was like this super liberal like feminist and she thought it was hilarious like the trigger warning so the wording was like so funny that it, it came from that person but she's awesome her name's jackie so uh, yeah, and um, it's 2015, maybe, okay. 2016. Mm -hmm. And it was just a way to make some money. Um, when I moved to Ohio, I had, uh, what's whatever, I was making two, 250 a month on training people online. They were paying me 50 bucks a month. Fucking cash app, Facebook private group, trying to like somehow thinking I could hide that money. <laughs> but the government doesn't know what cash app is. <laughs> And, uh, you know, <laughs> that the T-shirts came along because uh, I, I hit up my buddy who I was in, like, hardcore bands with and stuff. And I was like, hey, like, can you make me a, I want a logo for this. The Stay Hated shit on the back in Varsity. I want something on the front that has, like, either a chain on it or something. I was like, I don't want a fucking tiger or a lion. I don't want a plate. I, like, I don't want, like, the corny standard shit. I want something that looks like mm -hmm. it could be a 2005, like, beatdown hardcore band. And he came with the globe. It was the first thing he brought. I was like, perfect. So we, we made, my buddy Richie made, like, 15 of them at, like, one of those, like, the mall, like, kiosk places, right? Nice. For just for my lifters. Sends me one of them. I take a picture in my fucking living room, my one-bedroom apartment in Hilliard, Ohio, like this, like, fuck the world, right? I had just gotten my neck tattooed. I, I was like, fucking, you know. <laughs> and, uh, dude, and people went fucking crazy. They're like, can we get those? So I did a pre-order. We sold 84 of them, or 83 of them. And, uh, dude, I was like, comment, like, don't comment until you've paid <laughs> Mess listen, so so I was like, message me uh with a screen cap of the money that you sent to my PayPal and tell me what size you want and give me your address. So I dude, my phone just went fucking bananas, dude. I'm just like sitting there like sweating, like sweating. And Val is like take I'm like reading stuff, Val's taking it, writing it down. She wrote down every fucking order, every size. We counted them. I did I put in the orders. We fucking, dude, so stupid. We hand wrote the addresses they were going to on every single fucking bag. Yeah, you hated your life. And oh, I hated yeah. my life. And then I brought it to the fucking post office and they're like, we have to print labels for all of these. So I just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> and like, dude, it was fucking insane, dude. And I told, I told my buddy, I told my buddy who, who uh, he owns Norse Fitness. And he was like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I, you made this so hard on yourself. <laughs> like, what are you like fucking it, doing? And, um, yeah, and it's kind of just, I kind of just, like, figured it out from there on. I've had yeah. a lot of help. And, like, we had, I'm, I'm always super grateful. I get in the mode when I'm, like, folded T-shirts that I'm like, man, this is fucking brutal. Like, you know, just, like, sweating. I got a back pump. Like, it's fucking, you know, it's just, like, the <laughs> worst. <laughs> I'm just, like, bombed. And then I think about it, and I'm just, like, really grateful that I have the opportunity because I remember we were so fucking broke that we didn't know how we were going to pay rent. Rent was due in, like, four days. So I called the place that I'd had the T-shirts made, and I said, what's the cheapest beanie you can make with this logo on it, and how much will it cost per unit? 
and when are the price breaks? Because I know there's going to be a price break on quantity. Told me all of it. I got a flat, no depth, like mock up, uh-huh. quote unquote, of a beanie, like a hat that said stated on the front of it. I did a pre order to get the money to pay rent. Because I was like, if I can get this money in, if we can get at least 600 bucks, we can pay for this fucking apartment. We can get 600 bucks in five days and then we can figure out the rest from there because by the time these people are expecting these hats, this money is going to be gone. So I better have another job set up so I can fucking pay for the hats to be made and then ship them and da 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 da. And we just rolled the dice and we sold like almost 100 of those fucking things. Fuck yeah. And so we had, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. just like, dude, you don't <clears throat> get rewarded for going all in. I know you guys are trying to wrap up. But I gotta tell this. We we no. we. Uh, I was listening to a Rogan podcast, and uh, Tom Segura was on it. Mm-hmm. His new stand up is fucking. He's fucking crazy. Awesome. He's so funny. Um. So, but he was talking about how when they first started, they would be doing so like, let's say we were both comedians, right? And um, I'm doing like these little spots where I'm getting paid fifty bucks. For the spot right and and you have a full-time job also so you just keep doing those and there are these other ones that we could do a little more for you have to travel for maybe they're a hundred bucks a spot you can't do them because you have that other job I start doing them right and then because of that five years later or however long later I'm getting offered you know opera houses and and bigger venues and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and now you want to do that well, motherfucker, it's been five years and you stayed with that other job and you didn't burn the boats. You didn't dive in. I've been living in a one bedroom apartment, eating fucking ground turkey and broccoli and, and microwave rice for fucking five years. And that's why I get this other thing. And that's how I felt about trigger. It was so crazy because I was like, man, I feel that because you, what you see now is you got guys who've been sitting there on the Internet saying that fucking They've been saying that the internet and social media is fucking stupid for the past five years. And now all of a sudden they want they want to sell coaching. They want to sell T-shirts. It's like, motherfucker, you missed that boat. Mm -hmm. You were too busy with your nine to five. You didn't have the balls to go all in. I did. I fucking rolled the dice on me and my wife's livelihood. And that's why I get this. And you don't. So when did you feel like you kind of hit like really hit a stride or what do you would you identify as like a pivotal point? To where there's, like he went to that there's been team. levels right yeah. mm-hmm. i think we just hit one recently right mm-hmm. like i think 100%. that was like a For i sure. think it was a we're, huge level we're in the middle of like a big step yeah. right um i think when i had the balls to i think a big step was was doing like having you know you guys started doing some content for me like filming the mental mondays used to come mm-hmm. out for that and we did some of that stuff i think that was a level up but I think when, when I really did it was when I was, there was a moment I was supposed to, I was driving Uber part-time and doing this stuff. I had, I had already left the construction gig. I was driving Uber part-time and I was uh, doing the coaching stuff and the Uber was, I was probably making like, like 200 bucks a week or something like that on Uber, just fucking around. And I was supposed to drive on this Saturday morning. I was like, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to drive for like three or four hours. Uh, make some money and I just said fuck it I'm just actually gonna go to this meet and I'm just gonna go and hang out at this meet like I got a couple buddies doing it in over in Grove City and on my way I had done a t-shirt drop like the night before or something like that yeah because it was Friday and on my way I sold like six or seven t-shirts I got the notification right so it's a couple hundred bucks and I'm like <laughs> I'm not driving Uber anymore fuck this like and then I was just like that those t- that time that I spent driving uber could be much better if i was learning how to write better programming Mm -hmm. looking at marketing stuff listening to to smart podcasts doing getting better at lifting weights by doing my mobility at home so that my weights got bigger so more people watched me so more people found my brand and that was like a big moment for me it was like fuck this i literally in the car canceled my uber like the driver app i was like nah i'm fucking done with this so there's been a couple different ones, but it all comes down to like to circle back something we said earlier. It's just like the confident, like the unwavering confidence in yourself to be like, nah, dude, I'm gonna make this work. And at this point, I could never go back. I can't imagine having a job <laughs> where I had to punch in. We've all, that, all, yeah. all four of us have, have done that. Yeah, like, yeah. like just 
go all in on yourself. And now yeah. you've been rewarded for that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure you got, I, I know it, right? Like, you guys got, how old are you guys? How, 23. 31. 32. About to be 26. Yeah, so you're all younger than me, some by like more than 10 years, right? I'm sure you, especially the younger guys, got dudes who hit you up now. They thought you were crazy, right? They thought that you were fucking wasting your time, and now they want a piece. And it's like, yeah, dude, I bet you Corey would hire you to sweep the fucking gym. You lost that opportunity. Yep. You're not, you're not, uh, I heard something, it's like, you're not sorry for not believing in me before. You're sorry for yourself because you didn't have the balls to do it. You're not, you're not apologetic. Now you're just reacting on facts that you mm -hmm. see in front of you. And it's really easy to say like, oh yeah, man, I, I'd love to be a part of it. It's like, would you, would you love to be a part of it when I was fucking making two grand a year on this? No, you want to be a part of it now because I'm making two grand a week on this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the internet's mm -hmm. stupid until I buy a house off of the shit I've done on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bitch, you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Exactly. Right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, it's like, it's That's like Kirby Bryant. <laughs> yeah. People think it's, people think it's goofy until they want a piece of it and they see, you know what I mean? It's easy. It's all just like, mm -hmm. they don't understand. And when it comes down to it, like, like you said, going all in on yourself, dude. And a lot of that I've learned from like Corey was instrumental in that for me. Corey, yeah. Corey and Dave, and honestly, Lou, were were instrumental in me realizing that like if you want something half in is not enough mm -hmm. all the way in mm -hmm. you're not gonna get the hundred dollar bill at the bottom of the pool by sticking your fucking toe in <laughs> fuck yeah that's fucking you gotta that's fucking hard. you gotta Put fucking you gotta <laughs> you yeah. gotta hold your breath and dive in head first mm -hmm. mm. That's fucking hard. That's fucking hard. Yeah, I just can't, yeah. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. write that shit down, yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, no, I got, I got a fucking yeah. trademark on yeah. that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marcus. All right, I got one last question. I just want to know what, like, what do you read? Like, what's your, like, if you give us a book recommendation, maybe what you're reading now or <laughs> your book that's impacted you the most. Uh, so, uh, I think one of the, um, the big one, uh, Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, is a book about Holocaust survivors. That mm -hmm. was really cool for me. Well, obviously not cool, but fuck. Jesus, don't I, cancel impactful. me. It was not <laughs> cool. Note that down. Uh, Night by Ellie Wiesel. I have the back of it tattooed on my shin. It's uh, another Holocaust. I don't know why those were impactful for me when I was younger. Man's mm -hmm. Search for Meaning was really good. So good There's yeah. a thing called uh, the delusion of self-reprieve that every human being has it. So you could be on a plane and it could be crashing. And for some reason, you don't think you're going to die. That's a human thing. You have the delusion of it's not going to be me. You know what I mean? Well, mm -hmm. it, it might be, though, motherfucker, and you have to get over that, right? But if you lean into that, I ain't going to be poor. I'm not the fucking one that's going to fail. So it has it's just a duality to it. Um, those have been really impactful for me. And then, uh, But honestly, like reading for me um, is more about entertainment. I, I tried to do the thing where I did like, like, I can't read a Dave Goggins book. I just can't do it. It's just not for me. You know what I mean? Like, I get inspired by, like stuff with texture to it yeah you know what i'm saying um so i read the, uh i'm really into this dude ted chang who does uh like anthologies um that are like sci-fi mm. that are like oh, yeah. really cool like are you a star wars <clears throat> guy no not at all i'm not even wow. i'm not like i'm not a harry po listen i'm not a harry potter guy not i'm not a, a fucking star, star wars, wars guy game of thrones i'm a game of thrones i like I fuck, right, with yeah, game of fuck with dragons yeah i was yeah. i was a I don't fuck with dragons, but <laughs> straight, straight to dragons. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, T Ted Chang does really cool stuff that um, is like uh, the, uh, really cool, like sci-fi, sort of like um, Black Mirror type shit, where it's like kind of uh, yeah. twisted. Okay, there's a really cool one about like uh, um, uh, called the Tower of Babylon, where they tried to build a tower to heaven. Yeah. And like that's a really cool one. And he does like uh, that movie Arrival, where they try to like figure out the language of the um, aliens that they can't talk to. There's like a big screen. Jeremy Renner's in it. That's based on a Ted Chang thing. Mm -hmm. So I I read his books and they're incredibly smart. Like really, <clears throat> um, thought provoking. Like that's what it was. That was like their mind. There's no algorithmic cheat for experience. Is a quote from one of his his things. So yeah. Uh, I don't really read much stuff as far as like business. I mean, I have like, you know, all, all of them, 50 Lost Power, like all, you know, yeah. all that stuff. I have all of them. 
but I really I think there comes a time like in personal development maturity where like that stuff just all sounds the same and you don't need that anymore that Alex that Alex Hermosi guy yeah he's been kind of popping off and like he's so, so smart he says something he's like I started reading all these books and I read all these books and then I realized that like yeah that's really cool but like you have to do it so reading the books doesn't do anything yeah, except for that. tell you that you can fucking read. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like He's not wrong. there's yeah. part of it. Some people need that to me. Like I'm like you said, personal, but like I'm kind of I don't want to say I'm past like I'm better than it or anything. But for me, like my motivation is looking at my house, looking at my wife. Well, there's and my so, yeah, there's yeah. only so many you could read of the same subject. And I want tech. I want like Practical I want to ask yeah. one of y'all like, hey, how can I make better video content? Yeah. I don't want I don't need the thing that's like, well, it's costing if you make 50 grand a year, it's costing you nine hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> to not make a million. It's like, yeah. OK, well, it's like, <laughs> <but I> like <laughs> that doesn't help me. You have to like yeah. read stuff that you're bad at. Like, I'm yeah. not good with like finance stuff. So I, I read finance stuff. But right. like if you're good with that, why would you fucking read it? That's just wasting yeah. your time. Like, yeah, I don't need motivation. I fucking also, wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Plus, I like out, laying in right? bed at night yeah. and reading something cool. Yeah, this is also you know? comic books. <laughs> like, My yeah. one personal development kick. I don't know how the fuck people read like one book per month or t- three books per month. Like, at, there's no way you're fucking taking that shit in. No, I'm, I'm no. a firm believer. If you read like four good books, like I yeah. have like four books, I'll just reread them because I'll find something yep. new every single time. I have yep. a I have a rule for myself. When I get into bed at night, no social media on my phone. I'll watch like my old training videos. I'll have, if I have a text message that I really have to get to, I'll, I'll do that. But no Facebook, no Instagram. Um, no work. Like I don't, I won't mm-hmm. coach videos. So I used to do that, like laying in bed. So my wife yelled at me and, uh, mm-hmm. so I stopped doing that. Um, so whatever and I put the phone down, I have to read at least two pages of a book before yeah, I go to sleep. And I don't good. give a fuck if I'm falling asleep while I'm doing it. I have to read two pages of a book because you know, you're moving, uh, a pile of sand and sometimes it's a effect. shovel and sometimes it's a spoon and whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I just, at least two pages every night. That's like, and it doesn't matter what the fuck it is. To me, it's just like keeping my brain sort of sharp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? All right. I think this is a great way to end it. Dude, you guys are sick. Thank you so much for having me. Fuck and like yeah. anybody who's watching this, like for real, like if you've made it this far, you obviously mm. fuck with this content. And if this is going to be out to the public and shit, like spend the money, get on Corey's app, like follow all these dudes, like. Listen it's, to his it, other episode yeah. too. It's, in, it's, yeah. it's invaluable information that what you guys do. I'm always so, I hate the word inspired, but I'm always so inspired when I come out here because you guys are just fucking killers. And so like I always go back to New Hampshire. Or when I was living here, I'd go back to Hilliard and be like, Yo, man, I'm I'm listening to fucking Jeezy the whole ride home and being like, yeah, let's get that money. <laughs> See, well, I, I, I always feel the most inspired after we talk to you. That's how it works. Yeah. It's like minded, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like minded. So I appreciate you guys having so me. So what? Like, what's your handles? Like, plug all the shit. Yeah. So uh, Anthony CW13 is my um, my personal. The CW is cold words. It's an old band. Everybody asks me anyway. So Anthony CW13. The trigger warning page is uh, trigger <laughs> underscore warning underscore conjugate. If you hashtag stay hated, like look for that. Um, and then I have a Patreon page. It's a, a subscription based website. It's very similar to what Corey's going on. I've kind of modeled my my brand kind of after a lot of stuff that he's done. Um, and then we're doing, uh, these dudes have helped me put together a new website for, um, it's got content and it has all the apparel shit. So you can kind of one stop shop there. And, uh, there's an email, um, list there that you can get on that we've been doing free fucking, uh, conjugate programming from there. You get a free month. And then we just put out a, a muscle building, like, uh, off season powerlifter stuff. We're going to keep putting out content. I got some, some stuff in the works. We're going to talk about off camera that. It's definitely worth. It feels scammy for me. Say, sign up for this email list. It's not. <laughs> it's not it's scammy. Legit. You can unsubscribe very easy, yeah. and it doesn't cost yeah. you any money. And all your motherfuckers always subscribe tell me you want to. Well, yeah, and you want to know you what the product f- drops. Yeah, yeah you, you owe it, so you don't have to send me the fucking angry DM. You wrote an Excel. You know it's what? Like, well, if motherfucker, everybody on the email <laughs> list yeah. got their Excel. Yeah, if you subscribe yeah. to it, you might just look lean like you. you know? <sighs> I'm so upset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, round table, round table, we're out. Hell yeah. Okay.